Why do you do it? Because I have to. There are no proofs that can determine the outcome of matters of the heart. We are merely explorers of infinity in the pursuit of absolute perfection. I owe you so much. No, no, no. It's I who owe you. Namaskar, I'm Ashok Vyas and this is Museum of Mathematics in Manhattan. Yes, Museum of Mathematics and there are many cool things that happen here. I'm uh, walking here at Museum of Mathematics and as you come down on these uh, circular uh, stairs, uh, there is uh, opening into uh, interesting space where people who are fascinated by mathematics come and here uh, is the place where they often get the opportunity of listening to some uh, wonderful mathematicians and today uh, they have uh, set it up uh, for the speech of uh, Professor Manjul Bhargava who is also Padma awardee uh, by Government of uh, India and uh, he's a young uh, professor who became professor at Princeton University at the age of 29. In any area, uh, if it wants to grow, evolve, innovative approach uh, is needed, then you cannot do away with computers. And I have the pleasure of the presence of someone who is helping uh, that technological aspect uh, here at the museum. Donald Chesley, such a pleasure having you here, sir. And tell, uh, tell me what uh, has uh, been your experience uh, as a part of this museum in terms of people who come here, what they learn, how excited they are. Uh, they generally get a lot out of the visit from uh, very small uh, children. Kindergarten through 12 is a large part of our uh, visiting population but there are a lot of high-level uh, adult uh, type uh, programs as well, including some of the world's top mathematicians who have come here and given speeches uh, and discussions on uh, very abstract stuff, but given in a way that's uh, generally accessible. And uh, I think as a whole, this museum has done a spectacular job of spreading the word about mathematics being fun useful and beautiful and I'm uh, very proud to be part of it. And when you say fun, then I'm reminded that there was a competition amongst mathematicians about uh, uh, creating uh, their own music. Uh, share that experiences, uh, experience when they came here and performed. Uh, well, uh, there are mathematicians and math teachers uh, all over who uh, have found the educational value of music or just their own personal pleasure from music and uh, some time ago, uh, late fall, there was a um, call out from the museum to uh, mathematicians, uh, math teachers, general public, interested in writing songs about mathematics in one way or another, and uh, performing them or having them performed by others. And uh, after a process of uh, looking over all the submissions, uh, about a dozen or so were chosen and uh, Composers, performers were invited to come to MoMath for an evening uh, called Open Set, and they played their songs, and uh, in some cases have on YouTube videos posted. Uh, I believe there's a web page uh, that you can find all this at the momath.org uh, website. Um, I'll let you know more about that when <laughs> I find it. Wonderful. And Donald, uh, what is the most exciting aspect of mathematics that sort of is fun for you? Well, I've actually worked in the past as a navigator on boats. And uh, prior to that, I was a student of physics with a lot of math study. And it was natural when I first started working on a boat to be involved in the navigation. And to this day, uh, most of the uh, creative mathematics that I've done, not much, but it's very largely motivated by or uh, um, shaped by uh, navigational mathematics, uh, spheres and uh, things like that. So it's well, That's amazing. And today also, interestingly, a uh, gentleman who is uh, going to address here, uh, Professor Manjul Bhargav, he's a mathematician and, and he is uh, deeply interested in music. I believe he uh, plays percussion uh, instruments yes. also. Uh, do you know something about uh, the subject matter that he's uh, going to be sharing today? Uh, I am not sure exactly, uh, well, actually it's a movie about an um, Indian mathematician uh, 
born in the 1880s, I believe, uh, lived not to a very uh, old age, but he did brilliant work in the time that he was alive, and uh, uh, largely number theory, and uh, an inspiration to all of us interested in that type of subject. Um, he'll, I'm sure, have much more uh, detail to tell you about, but uh, it's an inspiring story. And, Absolutely. and in the trailer that we saw of the film, The Man Who Saw Eternity, Sri Nivasa Ramanujam, the mathematician, uh, is interacting with people who are asking him about where uh, he got uh, those theories. And he says uh, he got it in meditation. So there is an interesting overlap of mystical journey of human mind uh, with respect to how mathematical equations are revealed to you. Uh, do you see the place of uh, the area which remains unknown uh, also plays some role uh, as a navigator because you have been to different places and it must have been an adventurous uh, way for you. Well, a uh, large part of the fun and challenge is learning your way in an unknown place and uh, piecing together from your observations uh, what you should logically do next. And uh, on, that's a very uh, practical low level of the same kind of thinking and feeling and uh, inspiration that something like higher math and uh, even meditation, or especially meditation, can bring. The director of Museum of Mathematics is here uh, with me. Hi, my name is Cindy Lawrence. I'm the executive director of the National Museum of Mathematics. And I've been working on this project since, I guess, 2009 is when we started. But we just opened about three years ago. So we've been here since 2012. And we hope that we're conveying the excitement and the wonder and the beauty of mathematics. So in general, when people think about museums, uh, they think about different uh, ideas which have uh, which are rooted in the past, but here it is uh, about something which is evolving. So when you conceptualized or this uh, museum was conceptualized, uh, what was the general uh, structure for this museum in mind? So I wasn't the one who conceptualized the museum, although I was working on the project from the beginning. Um, we had a team of people who are just very creative mathematicians. Glenn Whitney was the one who had the idea for the project. George Hart contributed, our designer Tim Nissen. And uh, together, we wanted to show that math could be creative, it could be colorful, it could be fun, it could be exciting. And those aren't words that people typically associate with math. As you say, people have the sense that math was done many years ago, that there's nothing new to learn. And yet, there are new math research papers being published every day, and a lot of new math being discovered. And so we try to convey that math is exploratory, and there's so much more to learn. What is uh, the most uh, exciting part of this museum for you in terms of any exhibit that you are passionate about? Uh, if your friends come, you want to show them or oh, look at this? Well, I think our marquee exhibit is the square wheel tricycle. And I'm always excited to show people that because it's just such a surprise that a square wheel can roll. And of course, math helps you make the impossible possible. I also like an exhibit we have called String Product, which to me is very surprising and beautiful and illustrates a very elegant principle about a curve called a parabola. So this is my favorite exhibit. This is called String Product. It's actually a giant paraboloid, and our staircase wraps around it. It shows a very interesting property of a curve called a parabola that many people are not aware of, and it's delightful to even expert mathematicians who may not be aware of this property, as well as middle school students, high school students, and even small children like the fact that there are lights and buttons, even if they don't quite yet understand the concept. So I think it's the universal appeal of this exhibit that really makes me love it so much, and the fact that it really demonstrates how beautiful and how elegant mathematics can be. And to me, it's fun to see a PhD mathematician be surprised and joyful at something they weren't aware of, and then see a young child have that same surprise and joy at the same exhibit. So to me, I think the most fun are the people who come to visit and seeing their expressions on their face and their enjoyment of a subject that they maybe didn't think was going to be enjoyable. The thing that interested me about the man who knew infinity was, it was a story I knew nothing about. Uh, about a man I knew nothing about. And it was about mathematics, something which to me seems entirely passionless, but it does contain passion and wonder and mystery and art. Tell me what uh, is it that you know about uh, this project? 
Well, I've seen the movie now a few times, wow. so I can say that it's a, a beautiful movie, a wonderful movie about a man who almost defies explanation and understanding, a man who was uneducated in India and who somehow could see mathematical principles that others couldn't see. And what was striking to me in, in learning about the story as I saw the movie was that a lot of times mathematicians try to prove something, whereas he seemed to know it and then went in the reverse order and tried to prove that what he knew to be true was true. And in fact, he was able to prove with some other mathematicians in the UK, he was able to prove that many of the principles that he said were true were true. And it's amazing and nobody really understands how he could see these things, but uh, he was brilliant. And the work that he did is still applicable to many areas of math and science today. And we're delighted to have Manjul Bhargava, who's an associate producer on the film, here with us. Manjul's a Fields Medalist. That's the highest honor you can receive in mathematics. And he says that his own work is actually related to and based on some of Ramanujan's work. So here's somebody whose work is just so compelling and so long lasting that mathematicians are still using it today. I owe you so much. No, no, no. It's I who owe you. We are so happy tonight to have Manjul Bhargava here, who is a Fields Medalist. Uh, you may know that that's the highest honor one can achieve in mathematics. Uh, and it's really, it's a really a, an honor to, to be able to do this together with, with Matt Brown, who is the, the writer and director uh, of this new uh, film on Ramanujan called The Man Who Knew Infinity. <laughs> so this is a picture of Robert Canigal here, and that's his book, which you can... Yeah, there are plenty of copies right over there. Uh, and this was written in the 90s, came out in the 90s. And it's a book that I actually read uh, when I was in school. And it certainly inspired me greatly. And so it's my, I highly recommend uh, reading this book if you haven't seen it before. And this has really inspired uh, lots of generations of, of mathematicians, Ramanujan's story, but especially after this book came out. Uh, it was certainly an inspiration for me and for many others. The Man Who Knew Infinity, same title is now the title of the new Hollywood film about Ramanujan, based on Canigal's book, uh, directed by Matt Brown. He says that God talks to me. I find that area is not explained that much, or maybe consciously you didn't try to delve much into that aspect, or maybe it is not mentioned. No, that actually book. comes up a fair bit in the, in the film. And this is actually a major source of, of tension between Ramanujan and Hardy when there are many sources of tension. There's a cultural gap. There's a, uh, there's a method of doing mathematics gap between them. But yeah, go ahead, Jürgen. Well, I, it is an area that I wouldn't have minded going into more um, in the film because there was some debate over how much God, I mean, it was very clear that I don't think Hardy wanted to recognize that Ramanujan was spiritual. Because he was a staunch atheist. He was a staunch atheist, and he couldn't accept that. So that there's different points of view on it. Um, one of the things that I found fascinating, especially Robert Canigal was so amazing to me, he opened up all of his research to me. So I was able to read a lot of the things that he read when he was writing his book and a lot of the accounts from India as well. And there was a number of, a number of um, writings recording about Ramanujan and him coming up with sort of metaphysical and, and spiritual aspects into just uh, his way of looking at mathematics beyond the, the few that I reference in the film. And I would have liked to have gone probably further in that in the film, but we only had an hour and 43 minutes and I had to keep the focus on what it was. But, but yeah, it is I referenced in your movie uh, It is referenced a few referenced times, a few yeah, times but there, there's much more to it. And I think it would be interesting to look at actually just to, to look at how that worked. And he, he came up with ideas about like, remember I was telling you about the Trinity and the Asafa. Oh yeah, right, like right. He would come up with formulas and then find religious ideas behind them and a few different references that didn't make it into the film that I wanted to put in. So thank you for bringing it up. Because yeah. I think that was a whole aspect to him. I just wanted maybe, is it okay to? Integrals, infinite series. I've never seen anything like them. From an Indian clerk, ill-educated in Madras, I would very highly value any advice you give me. Letter for you, postmarked England. Yours truly, S. Ramanujan. What does the S stand for? Not himself.
You intend to invite him here. <laughs> Well, Ed Pressman is a legendary producer. He's produced some of the greatest movies we've known from um, Wall Street to Badlands. He's worked with Terry Malick, Oliver Stone, all, all of the great, all of the great directors, and he's um, stood by them uh, early in their careers and given them the opportunity to try films that are difficult to make and he he does that and he protects you creatively and he let us make this film and not have to compromise in any any way shape or form so we're very privileged so i'm actually uh, really thankful to you as a viewer uh, and from all the potential viewers who are going to know more about uh, ramanujam and the incredible uh, journey of his mind uh, which takes us to infinity but tell me about your conviction in this project after you heard uh, the vision of Matt Brown uh, and how the film would unfold and allow me to say most of the decisions nowadays are guided by commercial concerns and this probably uh, do not uh, seem to have a lot of juice on the face of it. No, but Matt's passion and intelligence was was very clear to me and it's uh, I guess in my own way as a producer I take something from Ramanujan it's uh, and it's, what did you what did you yeah, what did you take from Ramanujan well it wasn't a logical process it, it came to me and in my dreams <laughs> <laughs> so, to, so, <laughs> so let's go to your dream and when you read the book first and uh, up to this uh, point as you have traveled with the book. Uh, what is it that you feel it has revealed more than what it did uh, on the first reading? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I was originally drawn to it for the human story. I, I still feel connected that way with it. It's an incredible f story of friendship. But uh, out, of, out of the whole journey, I think the thing I've learned the most is that genius... Uh, can come from anywhere and we have to be open in order to recognize it and and we have to invite it in and it's it's uh, it's something that I feel very strongly about and I hope that this film helps to touch a lot of people and inspire them and work as a form of outreach really uh, so that there can be more films like this as well but also that hopefully people will find other Ramanujans around the world and and bring them in where maybe before they wouldn't have given them a chance so now, um, he as a writer and a director both, where do you give him more um, sort of uh, marks? Well, it's a wonderful script. And uh, Matt chose, uh, he, was, he was smart enough t to choose top people for all the key positions. He, he, the production designer had... Uh, had done, an, I won an Oscar for... Um, she had won an Oscar, Luciana Rigi. Luciana Rigi, amazing. She won an Oscar uh, working with uh, Merchant Ivory. Right. So. And, and uh, the cameraman, Larry Clark, had done films with Kubrick, and the editor had done films with uh, Tim Burton. So he was smart enough to know how to surround himself with really, really good people. And talk to us a little bit about the star cast, and I think you have a range of uh, actors from those who are comparatively new in the industry, like I believe Devika is from New York, yes. and uh, she is not that seasoned as is uh, the one who plays the Hari. Sure. Uh, now Devika was amazing in the film, and as you know, when you make a film like this, uh, an independent film, you really need your cast to believe in it and 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 embrace your vision for the film. And I was very fortunate because I had Dev Patel and Jeremy Irons, who um, really went there for me with this and their performances and were absolutely incredible and just transcended. So I, I felt very blessed and supported by my actors and, you know, Dev especially coming to India with me and, and, and having to, to endure some very difficult filming circumstances. Um, he is a real trooper. And Jeremy, for me, was a mentor in many ways and he really taught me a lot about the filmmaking process. So I would have been lost without them. And Devika, to her credit, really holds, holds her own in this film, and I'm really proud of her work. Wonderful. And uh, looking at the time constraint that we have, um, there are some uh, ongoing things that are associated with this movie, and as he was mentioning, there might be hidden Ramanujans uh, somewhere. So in what way you are going to reach out to them? Well, there's a, a website which... Uh, 
I, I don't remember the actual. We'll we'll display that. Yeah. Uh, but that is uh, that is up and running, and is going to be uh, you know, uh, re be reachable worldwide, and it's a it's a series of uh, puzzles, which uh, the, the the head of the uh, U.S. Olympic Mathematical Olympic team ha has has devised, and uh, a company that uh, is is very into the this process is having it distributed. Uh, I think there are a couple of thousand people on already, but it's just started. Wonderful. So, uh, Matt, uh, these two individuals, uh, Hardy um, and uh, Ramanujam, both were from uh, different side of uh, life in terms of their appreciation and understanding is concerned. Where do you put yourself in between the two? One was coming from a mystical and spiritual uh, side, another was kind of uh, atheist. Well, I, I, I didn't want anybody to feel like we were trying to push anything on them with this film. I certainly I, I don't like that. I think it's up for people to make their own minds about it. I will say that having t over these years to come a deeper appreciation of mathematics and how it works as an art form and how truly these pure mathematicians are artists, I'm astounded. I mean, I think that they're, how do you explain the fact that this work a hundred years later is being used to understand the behavior of black holes and influencing string theory on levels uh, from somebody that had no formal education to speak of. Uh, to me, uh, God, I don't, I can't speak to that, but I'm, I'm open to the idea. And I, um, but I would never want to. I don't think our film is preaching, um, and I, I would, I want people to make up their own minds about it. And and Hardy was an atheist, and for Ramanujan, he thought a, a equation had no meaning unless it expressed the thought of God. So they were very different people, and I think that's the core of this movie, and it's. It's about people coming together and, and hearing one another and being open and connecting. So uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. So I think what is, what is exciting with the presence of Matt and uh, Ed, um, we, uh, with the help of this movie, would start appreciating Matt's uh, as an art form. Many times you have heard a musician after a wonderful performance, he says, I don't know, something was flowing through me and we take it, we accept it. Writers also say that something, I mean, it wasn't me, the poetry just came to me. But if a mathematician says that, uh, we say, no, no, how can you say that? <laughs> so, so I think you have uh, helped a lot of mathematicians. And uh, share with me now, associate producer Manjul Bhargava also being an accomplished mathematician. He's absolutely incredible. I mean, he's, he's, he's so eloquent as well in talking about it and making, making things understandable to a layman. Um, we were also blessed with Ken Ono, who is our on-set mathematical advisor. So, you know, we've been surrounded by mathematicians for the last couple of years. And, and, and we've, I started as a writer and an artist myself. I, I see in Manjil, we've been spending a lot of time together on this tour, and, and we've talked a lot about that moment of inspiration with things. And we both said, we both need a lot of sleep before we're creative. <laughs> and, and just quiet and sleep, and then, you know, inspiration can happen. Whether you're a writer or you're a mathematician, and maybe that's that way. My brother's a musician, and he did all the music for the film. And um, it was really... Co but you like bourbon and Manjal doesn't drink. That's true. <laughs> I, I do. I, yes. <laughs> well, I'm Irish. <laughs> so. uh, so, Irish whiskey. Um, but yes, Kobe Brown did all the music, my brother, for the film, and he worked um, very closely to try to do, we used all South Indian instruments in, in the music for the film, trying to be um, authentic. So that was exciting as well. So there is a complete appreciation of life uh, uh, with so many colors in the form of uh, this wonderful film, The Man Who Saw Infinity. Uh, such a pleasure and honor to be standing with the director, Matt Brown, and producer. Uh, lots of thanks to you, along with good wishes. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a show we have uh, right here at uh, Museum of Mathematics for ITV. I owe you so much. No, no, no. It's I who owe you. You wanted to know how I get my ideas. God speaks to me. There are no proofs. We just supposed to take him at his word? No. You have to take him at mine. I realized over time that this film was about the cost that comes when two people wait out of fear to connect in their relationships, which is tragic, and you see it all the time in life, but you really saw it 
between these two people. And, you know, you, I, I think it's a miracle that Ramana John made it to Trinity and Hardy brought him over and was willing and was the right person at the right time to take the chance to bring him over. It's a bittersweet triumph at the end of the film because, you know, you want, you want a happy ending and, and there is a happy ending in a sense, but it's It's, it's interesting. Now the president of the Royal Society is uh, Venkat Raman Ramakrishnan, <laughs> uh, who is actually born in India. <laughs> so when we, uh, when we showed him the movie last in week, Cambridge, in, uh, there's a line in the movie uh, about Ramanujan being proposed to the Royal Society and someone objecting, but he's Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and Vankar Raman Ramakrishnan was, <laughs> that was the funniest line for him. He's like, uh, <laughs> uh, the man who knew infinity, uh, which will be coming out to theaters uh, on April 29, uh, about the life story of Ramanujan, directed by... So excited to, to, to join the team for this movie, be an associate producer, was that Matt really got us, mathematicians, that he really understood the way we think about our subject as an art and, um, and as a pursuit of beauty. Tell me, at what point you became an active uh, part of uh, this project? Actually, I've been involved for 10 years. <laughs> uh, as Matt was describing, there were many highs and lows in the making of this movie. It was not so easy to get funding for a movie of this type where the lead character is an Indian uh, and also a mathematician. <laughs> Those are two strikes in the, in the Hollywood world. Uh, so, yeah, this project started more than 10 years ago. It's gone through for me, it's gone through four different directors, uh, directors that came and went, tried. Uh, producer was the same. The producers also changed. Everybody, you know, everything changed. We didn't talk about that so much today because it was. I wanted to make sure that Matt's story gets told. Uh, Matt Brown is the current uh, writer and director who's done just a fantastic job, and he made it. He met, He's the one who managed to get it done uh, in a way that preserved our integrity. You know, Hollywood often asks for changes in the story to to play up to certain audiences and Matt kept the story the way it is and that's why I was so excited to, to work with him he was the he was the director that really made it happen in the in the correct way for for a mathematician and an Indian to that we wanted the correct story both mathematically and the correct Indian story uh, he really brought it out and that's why I was so happy to be involved with him and since you read the book long ago uh, and now you saw the film uh, as a reader, what do you get out of the book and as uh, a viewer of the film, what do you get? Is it very different or it's similar? I would say the movie is a subset of the book. I mean, the book is, is huge uh, and it has way more. And that's how usually how it is. When a, f when a film gets made about a book, usually the book has way more content. A movie has to, especially in Hollywood, <laughs> in India it can be longer, but in the, in the Hollywood world it has to be under two hours. And in under two hours, how much can you really say? Well, you can say a lot. Uh, uh, and you can really touch people more than a book can uh, through film, but you can't get into as many details as a book does. And so, uh, certain details are chosen to be representative of what what happened, and that's what this film does. Mm -hmm. Taking advantage of your presence, and it's an incredible uh, coincidence, if I say, uh, that we have someone who is interested in music and who is recognized as a mathematician at your age. Uh, when we look at Manjul and we say Padma Bhushan uh, and uh, the top uh, award which is considered Nobel uh, Prize uh, in Mathematics uh, uh, that has been conferred on you and we say you are so young and when we hear that how young Ramanuja was then, that uh, how that made you feel uh, in terms of his journey? He did incredible things at such a young age and as I was saying earlier today, if he lived to a normal age, mathematics would be completely different. I mean, it already is very different from just the few years of work that he did on mathematics. You know, the way we view mathematics has totally changed because of him. But if he lived to a normal age and kept producing um, the mathematics that he was at the rate that he was till a normal age, uh, math would be completely unrecognizable today from what it is. I mean, it's just uh, he would it would have done so much. He would he he was producing stuff at such a young age, uh, at such an, an alarming rate, um, and we just it's just such a tragedy that we had to lose him so early. But even the short amount of time that he was here, he completely changed mathematics. <laughs> and from a little bit of uh, the scenes that we saw from the film, he he was longing that there would be someone out there who would understand his mind right, right. and and that search uh, ended up with 
Hardy uh, responding to his letter. So, talk to me a little bit about the need to be understood as a mathematician. Well, absolutely. For any artist or any scientist, if you make discoveries, you want other people to be able to see them, to appreciate them, to use them. And here he was in his own mind, producing such amazing things, and nobody could understand him. And that was a real, uh, a real struggle for him, a real difficulty. Uh, because every scientist and every artist, they don't just do it for themselves. They do it for, to some extent, you do it for yourself. But at some point, you want it to be, uh, to be seen, to be used, to be applied. And that was a real struggle for Ramanujan. And that was his family and friends were were wonderful in encouraging him to try to reach out to, to mathematicians around the world, not just locally. Mm. Yeah. And, and Manjul, we'll come back to the film, but slightly uh, talking about the contemporary India from the point of view of where we have arrived. And still, is it the stamp or seal from the West uh, that actually helps in uh, scientists or artists finding the next level, uh, which happened during his time, it is still holds true. Do you see any changes likely to happen where India would be in a commanding position to right. sort of put a seal that oh, he's authentic and uh, here we are to support him grow further? That's a great question because when I visit India, I'm shocked, sometimes surprised that lots of Indians don't know about Ramanujan. I even find that more people in the United States know about Ramanujan than, than in India, uh, especially among the science-interested community. Uh, even in the science-interested interested community in India, uh, lots of people don't know about Ramanujan or his work. So I actually think, given what you're saying, the fact that Hollywood has been so interested in Ramanujan's story and the scientists of, uh, of the United States have been so interested in his story and his work and the profundity of his work. Um, that's actually going to help make Ramanujan more well known in India. <laughs> uh, but hopefully there will be a time when India can recognize its own people by, it, uh, by themselves. And you know that will, that will happen one day, but it's, it has been a slow process, I completely agree. Yeah. And, and what you mentioned in 2002, uh, they rediscovered how uh, what uh, was uh, discovered by Ramanujam is applied. No, they didn't rediscover it, but they, they finally understood. <laughs> we finally understand what Ramanujan wrote in his last letter to Hardy. He wrote some amazing mathematics in there that was not understood for 80 years. And finally in 2002, the significance of it was understood and it's caused a revolution in that area of mathematics. Thousands of papers are being written about it and it's now being applied to physics. It took 80 years. It shows how much Ramanujan was ahead of his time, decades ahead of his time. And it took decades for people to realize its importance and, and to start using it in applications. You know, uh, let's talk about his mind. And uh, it is difficult to talk about the mind of someone who uh, is written about in a book which is, says the man who knew infinity. Uh, is it possible to know infinity? Well, what's meant by that? You know, sometimes people compare Ramanujan with um, the idea of a savant who, de who can do huge calculations in their mind uh, like a computer. And what Ramanujan did is not what a savant does. Uh, it's another level, you know, what people sometimes call a genius, is that he wrote down equations that weren't just true for the first thousand numbers or for, for the first hundred thousand numbers. They were true for every number, all the way up to infinity. Uh, and he had ways of coming up with formulas that held for every number. And in that sense, he's the man who knew infinity. He knew things that were true for all infinity numbers. And, and that's what's meant by that. And that's something that a computer cannot do. Because if you're given a, com a computer a formula, it can check it for the first 10 numbers, for, for the 100 numbers, for the first million numbers. But a computer doesn't have the creativity to say, therefore, it holds for all numbers. You know, that requires a human mind, the kind of thing that, that Ramanujan did. He knew infinity the way a computer cannot. <laughs> and the way you explained, uh, he had a sort of personal relationship with uh, many digits. So 17, 29, you said, uh, he said that this is the two cube roots. Yeah, this is the 17, 29 uh, is the smallest number. Uh, somebody told him, I already told him that, oh, this seems like a dull number. That was the number of my taxi cab, 1729. It's kind of dull, no? And Ramanujan said, no, no, it's a very interesting number. It's the smallest number that's the sum of two cubes in two different ways. <laughs>
So it is it is incomprehensible that someone who was living with six, six other people in a small room uh, would be always meditating on the mathematical formulas and the explanation he gave is uh, that he gets it from uh, goddess and uh, that is home goddess and uh, Devi Ra Namagiri. Right. Uh, how, yeah. how, how would you explain that as a mathematician yourself? Well, you know, he did a lot of his mathematics when he wasn't doing it at home uh, that was shared with six people, that room that was shared with six people. He spent a lot of his time sitting in the lobby uh, of the local Namagiri uh, goddess temple. And he would listen to the drums there, the Tavil drums, the classical Carnatic drums. And, and that temple environment was a, was a huge inspiration for him. The art, the art that happened there, the meditation that happened there, the prayer that happened there. That was a big inspiration for him, and that's how that's how he did mathematics growing up. And so, even when he went to Cambridge, he would meditate on Namagiri, and 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 so for him, the, the formulas came from that meditation on Namagiri. And he even felt that Namagiri would write those formulas on his tongue when he was sleeping, and he would wake up and write them down. So Namagiri was a, was his great inspiration for for mathematics. I owe you so much. No, no, no. It's I who owe you. No, that kind of a relationship he had with numbers as well as with Namagiri, that is incredible. And uh, looking at the time constraint that we have, I want to sort of talk about uh, a few more things related to this particular side of uh, his um, exploration of mathematics in a mystical fashion, which was uh, not understood by Hardy. And probably uh, it must have been difficult for this relationship to grow uh, and that understanding where they could communicate. Yeah, well, for Hardy, he refused to accept that he got, that Ramanujan got his formulas from Namagiri because he was a staunch atheist. And that's something that's portrayed in the movie quite a lot, this tension between Hardy and Ramanujan, where they not only came from um, different cultures, England and India, but they also had different ways of doing mathematics. And then they had different views on where mathematics come from. For Ramanujan said that an equation has no meaning to me unless it expresses a thought of God. Uh, he would look for beauty, he would look at an equation and decide this is, a, uh, this is a real equation, it has meaning to me because clearly this is an equation of God. And that's, that's how he judged the beauty uh, uh, of equations, of mathematics. And for, for Hardy, he was a staunch atheist. He says, no, there's an absolute way of deciding beauty. Although he couldn't define beauty <laughs> uh, in a precise way, he, said, he thought that people know it when they see it, but you don't need God to, to talk about it. And that was a, you know, that was a little gap between Hardy and Ramanujan that they, they often talked about, uh, but had trouble understanding each other on. <laughs> so when Manjul talks about mathematics in the context of uh, Ramanujan, uh, you bring out uh, reference of beauty, grace, elegance, which many people do not associate with maths at all. Uh, maths as an art form, you look and you try to increase that awareness. In, right. in that direction, how uh, do you feel this movie is going to play an important role. Yeah, uh, as I was saying today, movies in the past have, d have shown mathematicians to be one-dimensional, very robotic characters. Uh, that's the stereotype. And of course, for mathematicians, the work that they do is an, is an art. Uh, it's the search for beauty and, and the truth uh, of the universe. And it's a very creative process for mathematicians, the same way painting is for painters and sculpture is for sculptors. Uh, coming up with mathematics is a very creative, artistic process. Uh, and the problem is that in school we're not taught mathematics that way. Uh, once you get up to the mathematics, research level mathematics, that's how mathematics is. And it's always been my hope that in schools eventually we start to bring in some of those artistic, creative aspects of mathematics, that art of discovery that mathematics involves. Uh, Right now in school, we're just given steps. Here are the five steps you need to do to solve this kind of problem. Memorize it and then just apply it blindly. <laughs> and that's not how mathematics research is. Usually it's a problem that you don't know how to solve yet, and you come up with patterns, you come up with ways of putting arguments together in creative ways to, to approach the problem. Uh, and I think we could do more of that in school, present a problem and have every student try and come up with their own way of coming at it in their own creative way. Because when you come up with it in your own way, you never forget it and you understand it in a way, and it's also more fun. <laughs> uh, so. uh, let, let's quickly touch about the fun of uh, this filmmaking process. Were you also uh, present during some shoots in India? Uh, I wasn't actually present in the shoots. There were two mathematical consultants on the film, uh, 
who also were associate producers. The other is Ken Ono. Uh, so Ken Ono spent a lot of time on the, on the set with the actors, training them to act like mathematicians <laughs> and working with them. Uh, for me, I spent more time in the, for example, in the editing studio, looking at the many takes of, uh, of the actors performing mathematics and, and talking and trying to decide what is the most authentic take, what is the one that, that really relates the, the truth about the way mathematicians talk about their subject. Uh, so I was more on, the, on that side of the, uh, of the work. Of course, I, spent, I did spend a lot of time with the actors as well, but not on set. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and that gives the final shape and the final look of the film, which we as viewers get to see. And, and lastly, I uh, was kind of said to hear, uh, to learn that because being vegetarian, he couldn't eat well while being at Cambridge and due to World War, he couldn't go back to India and that took a toll of his health. And it's such a tragedy. It's a real tragedy. Uh, the, way, yeah, the way the universe works sometimes, it's so hard to understand because he was, he was at the point where he could completely transform mathematics, do centuries work of mathematics that normal humans cannot just, just can't, can't do. And he only got five more years on on the earth after you know after he was discovered by by uh, by my mathematician G. H. Hardy. Uh, some you know it would have been nice if they had taken better care of him there in England, but they weren't used to having Indians there. It's hard to completely blame them, but um, one wishes that Ramanujan spoke up a little more about the fact that he wasn't eating, or if Hardy or his colleagues uh, looked to see whether he was eating a little more. You know, there are lots of things or they could have hired a cook for him. You know, there, there are many things that could have, could have been done in hindsight and somehow were just overlooked. And it's just incredibly tragic uh, that they weren't able to take care of him when he did yeah. go there. They took care of him mathematically, but they didn't take care of him physically. Yeah. And, and when you, this question uh, might not be logical from the point of view of a devotee, but the way we see a lot of people nowadays uh, looking and worshipping then they seek uh, everything good to happen by the grace of God. So Namagiri is so close to uh, Ramanujam. Uh, she, uh, of course, her inspiration made him offer incredible equations in mathematics. She could have saved him also, like our mind thinks. Did you ever, uh, did you ever thought like that? Well, I, I wish he did. <laughs> the thing is that he didn't place his health as high as his mathematics when he was there. And it was really necessary that someone else took care of him. Um, you know, he was used to living with his mother and then his wife. And then suddenly he had to leave them and go to this country, England, which had never heard of a vegetarian. It had completely bland food. It was freezing there. He came from a tropical climate. He was just not prepared to be there uh, uh, without, without family accompanying him. And they were not prepared to take care of him. They, they didn't know, um, they didn't understand the, the, the problem because they've, they've, they've all always been in cold climates. They've always had uh, only you know, meat, uh, bland food. So it's, it's a tragedy that, you know, one of the first times that a scientist from India went to Trinity College, Cambridge, that it ha happened to be uh, Ramanujan, one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, who uh, was stuck there because of the world war. All these cons kind of almost a conspiracy to make it not work out for him. Um, yeah, it's a real it's a real tragedy. And any little thing, you know, if his wife had been able to come with him, if they had provided a cook, uh, if World War One didn't happen, if somebody had just noticed and taken care of him, any little thing like that could happen. And he could have been saved very easily. He didn't need a god. He didn't need a goddess to come in between. There was a really simple thing, and it was overlooked. And it's it's a, one of the great tragedies of science. So now uh, it is a mystery around us everywhere and uh, today it was an incredible presentation about the book, about uh, the life and uh, what we may learn from the life of uh, great uh, Ramanujan and, uh, the by and the film of course. So, which will be coming, the film will be coming out uh, on April 29 to theaters in select cities and then uh, we'll, we'll, uh, in the, a week after we'll, we'll come to uh, second tier cities as well. Uh, so. It'd be wonderful for, for the Indian community and the science community to support such a film. As I said, it's one of the first films that's about uh, having an Indian lead scientist. And it's the first film about any scientist that's, that's done in an accurate manner for four scientists. Uh, the portrayal is completely accurate. Uh, the cultural portrayal, as well as the mathematical portrayal, the portrayal of math as an art. It's the first time 
it's been done in such an accurate and beautiful way. And so we hope it'll do well so that it encourages more such films in the future. But in particular, it brings out this beautiful story of Ramanujan. We're so excited about that. And hopefully the community, the science community, and the Indian community, and, and, and the entire the world will support this movie. Thank I'm you sure, so much. I'm sure that will happen. And uh, what I wanted to celebrate today is the presence of uh, incredible uh, Manju Bhargava here. And this is an interesting uh, story of an Indian mathematician uh, not made by Indians and here while he's speaking at uh, Museum of Mathematics uh, most of the audience is not from uh, Indian origin but I guess uh, somewhere uh, the boundaries of all kind uh, goes away it is uh, the pure beauty whether it is coming from music or uh, uh, any other art form or mathematics yeah now this movie will is not uh, hopefully will be very popular in the Indian community uh, uh, one of the purposes of this movie is to make Ramanujan more known in the Indian community. Uh, but Ramanujan's story is really a global story. Uh, and it will, it's gonna, we hope that's going to appeal to everyone. Uh, the audience reactions to the movie have been great across, uh, across countries. We've introduced it at film festivals uh, around the world. And the audience reactions, uh, it's been uh, you know, above 90% uh, uh, ratings uh, among audience uh, reactions. So it's really a global story. His story is an inspiration uh, for for everyone, not just Indians, but for really, it's a he's a global he's a global inspiration. His story shows that talent can be found in the most uncompromising circumstances, regardless of economic background, regardless of cultural background, uh, regardless of geographic uh, location, and it's a real inspiration. It really shows that universal education is so important uh, to foster talent. Can, talent can appear in the any place, and we need to make sure. Uh, that it's found and fostered and, and used for the, for the progress of society. And in India, it's particularly important. There's so much talent there, and often it doesn't get fostered. Hopefully, this story will make it clear that we really need to educate every Indian and every person in the world so that all talent that exists can, can be brought out. Wonderful, incredible talent of expression also. And I know each one of you is talented, and this movie is an invitation to celebrate your talent and... Uh, to tap into uh, talents of those. And bring, those, it, out. Uh, and bring it out everywhere in the world, in every community. So universal share it. Universal education, universal education, so important so that we can get uh, every child educated and their talent fostered and nurtured. Yeah. Once again, uh, thanking uh, Manjul for joining us here right after his uh, wonderful uh, lecture about uh, Srinivas Ramanujan, the great uh, legendary mathematician from India, and the film The Man Who Knew Infinity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lots of good wishes. Thank you. Why do you do it? Because I have to. There are no proofs that can determine the outcome of matters of the heart. We are merely explorers of infinity in the pursuit of absolute perfection. I owe you so much. No, no, no. It's I who owe you.